So folks, welcome to the inner sanctuary of Outdoorsman Dave's hiking room. Never seen before on my YouTube channel. Have you ever been in that position where you've gone out for a hike or you've done an overnight camp and you forgot some important piece of equipment? Or perhaps you've taken gear and you've come home and you realise you just didn't need to take it. Well, I'm about to go out for a four-day hike and I thought I'd just take this opportunity to show you the thought process that I have or how to get inside the head of Outdoorsman Dave in order to decide the gear and the items that I'm going to take for the particular hike that I've decided to do. And in my case, I've decided to take the gear that you can see here. So keep watching and you'll see just how I arrived at that decision. I am no gear freak. I am no ultra-like hiker. In fact, a lot of my gear is second hand and I just repurpose it for what I need it for. So whether or not you're a newbie or whether or not you're a seasoned hiker but you're just fiscally prudent, then this video is for you. So we're going to cover what I think about, the gear that I choose for that, and um, just how we derive the gear here. So the first question that you need to ask yourself is, what kind of hike is this? Is it, is it a day hike or is it an overnight hike? Now if it's a day hike, um, please see that link up there where I explain the essentials that you should take on a day hike. Effectively, an overnight hike is the day hike essentials, but you just add to it if you're going to be away for a night or more. And the additional items will be what are you going to sleep in, what are you going to sleep on, and what are you going to cook with, and obviously you're going to take a lot more food. So once you've decided whether or not it's an overnighter, then you need to be asking yourselves, what is the terrain going to look like? Am I going to be using huts? Am I going to be using tents, hammocks, or maybe even a bivy fly? So if you're going to be using huts, or in our case in New Zealand, we use an amazing system of our dock huts, then you're going to need hut tickets. If you're going to be using a tent, um, is the terrain likely to be flat? Is it likely to be uh, soft enough to put your pegs in? If you're going to be using a hammock, is it because it's too rough but there will be trees? Or are you going to take a fly because that's your preference and it possibly is in summer? Okay, so that's the philosophy behind my decision making process. So we're going to go ultra light, we're going to have relatively good weather, the potential of being cold. Um, let's get into this, shall we? So first of all, I like to start with my pack. Now ordinarily, um, you've been seeing me generally using this one. Um, this is something like about 40 litres. Um, I bought it for $10 um, from a uh, dump, but um, yeah. I'm not going to be using this one today because just recently off Marketplace I purchased this lovely Galiscade Mac Pack. So I think this is about 65 litres and um, honestly this thing is probably around about 10 plus years old but I don't think it's even been used so I'm really looking forward to trying this out for the first time. I haven't yet tested it though. So the next thing I like to start with is, that's what we're going to carry it all in. What are we going to sleep in? So what's our shelter? So we're not doing hammocks. I want to go ultra light, so I'm going to use my 1kg Intense Outdoors. Which is this puppy. Now yeah, something a little bit different for me. Um, I just recently went to MacPack and bought myself a couple of hiking sticks and uh, for my daughter as well. So I'm going to use this um, to prop up the tent because this doesn't, this Indy one or the Lanshan one doesn't have um, any pole system to it. That's what we're going to sleep in. What are we going to sleep on? Now I tend to like using air mattresses. So I'm going to use this um, air mattress uh, from Kiwi Camping. Great, comfortable mattress. 
but it's only got an R rating of something like 2. There is a potential that we could get a little bit cold. Now I know this is probably a little bit chunky and it's a bit of the downside. This will probably go on the outside of my pack. Um, but this is just a 3mm foam mattress and this will increase the R rating um, of my mattress. Whenever it comes to uh, your sleep system, um, the sleeping bag only represents around about half of the warmth factor. The other half, because of the compression generally of down, is the mat that you're sleeping on. So if you don't get that right, if the R rating is too low, that's uh, the insulative value, um, then you're going to have a really cold and comfortable night. Um, underneath uh, my tent, uh, that does come with its own uh, sheet, fly sheet, ground sheet. Um, but I like to take um, another insulative layer, um, an ultralight uh, footprint, which I can lay all my stuff out as well. So I'll take that along. Right, so that's what we're going to sleep in. We better grab out my sleeping bag. So the sleeping bag that I'm going to use today is, or this on this adventure, is my down sleeping bag. Um, if I get too hot on this, I just unzip it and use it like a quilt and um, it comes with a crap bag. Now look, I will encourage you whenever you come home from your tramps um, that you always take your sleeping bag out of the cramp bag in order to give the feather um, some fluffing up or lofting ability. Now something else uh, that I tend to always take with me is a silk liner. Um, one, it improves insulative capability. Two, it's really snugly. And uh, three, it just keeps your, um, the inside of your pack, um, your sleeping bag clean. And um, I'm getting a little bit soft these days, so um, always bring my um, $3 Kmart pillow. So I set that inside this. I think it's about a, um, a one litre Kmart dry bag. Um, super fiscally prudent. And that just keeps my sleeping system dry. Okay, so now, what are we going to cook with? I'm a little bit spoiled for choice here. So let's just go and have a look at what I'm going to take. could decide to go with my alcohol stoves. Um, and This is actually my new Trangio, so I'm actually really looking forward to trying that out. But on my solo wild camps, I tend to do a lot of mess stoves. And so I'll leave that um, and these systems for another time. So um, I think what I'll do this time is I'll just go using a, a gas canister. Need to use this one up, it's getting a bit rusty. And um, for an ultralight, I'm going to use my, um, my BRS 3000. And seriously, that's, that's as small as it gets. So that's my cooking system. Um, and for the pot, I will, once again, absolutely spoil for choice here. Um, I have been thinking about maybe trying this out. This is um, a new system that I've just bought and purchased it from a deceased estate, actually. Um, and I don't think it's been used. But um, I'm not going to take that. Um, what I will take is my Barrett Outdoor cook system. So this is about 750ml. Um, and inside this um, I also have my, uh, uh, my titanium cup. Next up is um, what am I going to take uh, for water. Now I'm really excited to try this out. This is a, a water storage container. It takes two litres. Super light. 
Um, I purchased this from Equip Outdoors recently. Man, I really need to look at purchasing some more. Yeah, I'll take this one here. It's um, that's 750 mils. So I'll take those two. That's my water uh, water system. Um, now I per se have never filtered my water. Um, I did actually purchase the Sawyer Mini from Equip Outdoors about three years ago. Still yet to use it. Um, I'm comfortable that I should be okay where I'm going up on the mountains. Let's look a little bit now at the electronics. So you need to sort out your light. So I like to take this um, cheap and nasty energizer. Um, and I will take some spare batteries with that as well. And I really love this. This is one of my favorite pieces of equipment. It's actually from Kiwi Camping. Uh, they don't make it anymore, sadly. Um, it's a brilliant light, but um, it also um, doubles up as a, uh, a battery pack. So that will be my lighting system. Safety now, what should we take uh, to stay safe? Well, you're going to need uh, your first aid kit. Um, I always take a PLB. These days um, it's a cell phone. Um, guys, it's important to always have your whistle. Grab some maps. Uh, I've got two of them here and uh, my compass. And so that just really leaves um, food and personals. So for personals, um, that's your toothbrush and things. I tend to have everything packed inside these containers, although most of it at the moment is sitting out. So uh, the toilet paper, my mosquito repellent, my hand sanitizer, and um, some Vaseline. How's it going folks? So I'm about an hour and a half since I left Tyra Lodge, and I'm feeling really good. There's only one area that's uh, burning a little bit, and that's why I bring a little puddle of Vaseline. We're paid to take some, some dry sacks. Now I'm not going to do any side trips, so I don't really need to take um, my, my day pack. I certainly need uh, my toothbrush um, and a small amount of toothpaste and um, sunscreen and lip gloss. That all goes inside a dry bag. And um, I'll take a few bits and pieces like a string, wire, and um, batteries. So let's have a look at what clothes that I'll be taking for mountainous, summer, rough terrain. So all my jackets are hanging up on the line here. This is, tends to be more your winter. Gosh, I mean. Who hikes and swan dries these days? But once again, my clothes are in their own box. So, I don't normally bring hut shoes, but because it's four days and I know my shoes are going to be wet, I'm going to take, um, what do you call those things? Shoes. Now, um, when I, when I pack for clothes, and this never fails me whether or not I'm going on holiday or whether or not I'm going hiking, I literally pack starting at my feet and working my way up to my head and that way I just don't forget any items of clothing. So, we're going to start at the feet, um, we've got the shoes and um, I'm going to grab my tramping shoes out. I'm not going to take boots because I'm going to try to stay light. So the next thing is we need is we need socks, but socks are really handy anyway because you can you can use them for mitts or whatever. So we're going to take some socks, three of those, uh, and then coming up, I'm going to need to I'm going to bring my little small putties, and um, so um, I have stopped wearing my long ones. I just find I get a little bit too hot with my long ones. Uh, so just coming up now, we're going to go to uh, the underlayers, so our underpants, 
I use these Katmandu quick drying underpants and um, once again I think I bought these way back 10-15 years ago uh, yes they have been washed a few times since but um, very hard wearing and they just dry up really quickly and uh, they're not the breeze guys don't get the breeze because they tend to ride up um, these are more like a box of shorts and it just means that if you get too hot um, I've literally tramped four days in just those boxes um, fortunately nobody else was around um, so we're definitely going to get wet on day one so I'm going to take two pairs of um, pants once again these are quick drying once again these are Katmandu I bought a lot of stuff from Katmandu when I first started and uh, so those pants now they've got a few patches on them but they would have to be sitting up 15 to 20 years whenever you pack um, for clothes you need to pack clothes to hike in during the day and you need warm gear to get into um, and dry gear when you get into at night and that can sometimes double up for the gear that you hike out at on your last day so um, I like to have longs when I get into the hut just in case I start getting cold and these longs are zip offs so coming up now next layer oh by the way there is nothing wrong with using sports shorts uh, the light the dry they're just not as durable um, as a dedicated hiking short so let's come to the base um, our um, underlayer now so we're going to go my favorite merino short sleeve shirt I think this thing has got so many holes in it now I've stopped counting but um, it's I just love it and it's got New Zealand on the front when I get into the hut I like to put a long sleeve merino on uh, just so I don't get too cold and if it gets cold out uh, during the hiking day um, that can be a lifesaver so that's uh, that's the base layer so the mid layer now um, recently from Kathmandu I purchased this uh, UV hooded um, long sleeve shirt so it's quick dry and um, I don't get too hot in it it's my favorite color burnt orange so it's my brand and so I tend to tramp a lot in that now this is going to be a little bit different for me as a, um, a, a youtuber um, so my electronics pretty much my GoPro all my bits and pieces um, all my charging cords everything all sits inside uh, this container along with my tripods and my holders for my cell phone if I want to use that to film with um, I'm currently filming with my GoPro at the moment so that will come along and um, I just found that um, at a garage sale I think that was $2 there's one thing you don't want to do when you're a YouTuber um, is run out of battery on day three and you get another day to go so uh, this is 10,000 milliamps that normally is suffice and um, I would often then take a backup just in case and I probably might just leave it as that that's only um, these ones are only five. Oh, these are 10,000 as well. Yeah, in fact, that'll probably do. I won't need to take my third one. I don't know what it is, but as I get older, I, I seem to need uh, my reading glasses these days if I'm reading, uh, particularly the Radix um, instructions. And um, I'm going to be bringing my sunglasses as well because that'll just make me look cool. <laughs> no. Because you don't want to uh, burn your eyeballs out when you're up on um, the exposed slopes. Utensils, it's probably the one thing we haven't got through. Um, I'm just loving this little food cell that I purchased from Katmandu this year. Seriously, it just keeps everything together. So I'll also take this silicon cup. Sometimes um, it's good just to have a spare container to put stuff in while you're boiling something else up with the container you're going to eat out of. I'm going to use my um, my long spoon and just in case um, my hiking buddy's got some better food than I have I'll take my bad outdoors um, spoon and fork with me because 
Um, honestly, they, they weigh next to nothing. And in the side pouch here, I've got um, some more reserve matches. Got a little pocket knife, just in case um, I need to cut something up with a sharper knife. Because I'm not going to take my bushcraft knife. And um, of course, a big lighter. Other than the food, um, what I've done is all of my gear I've listed down um, on an Excel sheet. I've then itemized what it looks like. I've then got another column of each of the weights. I've got another column in terms of how many of those items I'm going to use. And then I've put a formula in there so that every time I select one or two items, it automatically accumulates and counts up the total uh, weight that I'm going to be carrying. Now there are other applications out there, I think um, Lighter Pack or Pack Lighter, and um, I need to look into that where it um, puts it into a pie graph. Um, but I look, I find this really handy. So what I'm going to do just now is I'm just going to read through this list. And this is how I just very seldom ever not carry the right item. Shouldn't need a pack cover with uh, the canvas Mac pack bag, but because I've not actually tested that yet in terms of its waterproofness, I will take a backpack cover. So I don't need any fry pans or anything because I'm just boiling water. Don't need any of my flints, saws, knives, hatchet. Let's go now into the kitchen and I'll just um, show you um, what I've decided to take for food. Maybe it's because I'm a little OCD. As I write out the day, so in my case, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so we're going in on Thursday morning, so I don't need breakfast. We're coming out on Monday night, so in theory we don't need dinner. But... Um, there's a possibility that we might get waylaid for an extra day, so there's um, one more dinner um, and a couple of um, noodles and some caffeine, and that will actually last me an extra day. But I'm also going with another hiker, so um, I'm sure he's going to have better food than me. So, the way that I set my things out is um, I have, um, I'm going ultralight because um, it's going to be four days, so I'm going to try to keep my pack weight down. Yes, I'll take some of this packaging off, by the way. I got a good deal on Radix, so everything that you can see here is um, Radix. I'm trying out their breakfasts, so three of those. Um, always got to have caffeine, so these are um, a Jed coffee. Um, really good coffee in the bag and once again very light so I'm not going to be taking in my Aeropress. Um, of course Christmas time so there's a few things left over so that's my sugar intake along with my ginger nuts and I'm taking beef jerky um, to give me um, some salt um, along with um, so nice and light lots of salt um, each day I'm using um, some electrolytes, so two of those per each day, so that um, reduces the chances of uh, cramp. Um, bought these for the last trip. Actually, per se, um, I'm not a great fan of them because it just really makes your mouth really dry and you've got to drink a lot of water, but a peanut slug is very convenient. And then at night, um, I'm going to the uh, Dehigh Radix um, and we're using the 800 calorie range and then rather than having another coffee at night I'm going to have turmeric because turmeric is a anti-inflammatory and uh, and that way I don't have a, a, an extra lot of caffeine in my system. That's all the food that I'm going to be taking for three nights four days um, I'll pack everything up and I'll leave uh, the weights down in the description Ouch. <laughs> 
So look guys, that just about rounds everything up. We've done my thought process and in terms of getting all of this gear, uh, the clothes that I'm going to select and the food that I'm going to take with me. And I hope that you find that that is helpful. But remember, gear choice is incredibly personal and so treat this like a shopping basket. Take out of what I do as ideas for what you might do on your next adventure. But take the principles towards thinking about what you're going to take based on the terrain and the conditions and the type of hike you can do. Take those principles and apply it to the gear that you have or maybe go out and purchase some more gear. So, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and you can be rest assured that Outdoorsman Dave and maybe friends will have a lot more exciting adventures coming to you in 2023.